We're going to be basing our message on a verse that comes to us from the book of Psalm, Psalm 67, verse 2. It's just a simple, short verse. It says, send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all mankind. That comes from Psalm 67, verse 2. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world. You know, if, I think if Christmas is really celebrating the fact that the Father gave us his very own Son that came into the world, then this season of Epiphany is opening up the gift and finding out who that Jesus is and what he really means for all people. And so as we celebrate this Epiphany season in the church here that comes after Christmas, we're again reminding ourselves that God came into this world in the person of his son Jesus Christ for all people, not just for one or two, not just for one particular group of people, but for all people. And so we have a number of appointed scripture lessons today that are helping us to see how God came for all people. God came. And he calls people into service in his kingdom. So we have two stories today in our scripture lessons about how God called certain individuals into his kingdom to serve and to spread the word of God. The first story is found in that Old Testament lesson. There we have the story about how the boy Samuel was called by God. Samuel was sleeping and he thought it was Eli who was calling him, but it really was God. And Samuel gives a strong personal response in the affirmative. He says, now speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So he listened to what God had to say. He, he had the call to serve and he accepted it. And then we're looking at the Gospel of John today. And it shows how God used people to spread the word. Jesus needed disciples. He wanted disciples to follow him and to help him with the work of spreading the gospel. And God intimately knows the people that he calls. He knows them by name. And so we hear the story about Philip who brought Nathanael to Jesus. Jesus was calling out to people to serve, calling his disciples, saying, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And so Philip brings Nathanael to Jesus and he tells Nathanael that this is the one who Moses and the prophets were writing about in the Old Testament as the people were waiting for the promised Messiah. So Nathaniel is led to Jesus, and by the power of the Spirit, he confesses that Jesus is the very Son of God and the King of Israel. That was his call into service for the Lord. And in our 9 o'clock service, we gathered up all of those who were elected as elders and members of the ministry and mission and ministry council of our church. And we officially installed them. They were called, they were elected to serve in this congregation with their talents and abilities in these two elected groups. And they were officially sent off to do their work. And in addition to these two accounts and, and the fact that God calls our elders and council to work in the church, we've also been praying about a divine call. A call that this congregation has extended to Pastor Stephen Klein of Zion Lutheran Church in Wayside, Wisconsin. He has been called by our congregation to serve as senior pastor here in this place. We believe that God uses the call process to bring his people, his servants, to serve the church in word and sacrament ministry. And now, having heard how God calls individual people, the question is, has God called you? Has God called you? In a very real way, God calls each and every one of us in our baptism. 
when the pastor poured that water on your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, there was a call to be a part of his kingdom and to serve and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. This is January, the middle of January, the very first month of the year. It gives us a new beginning. It gives us an opportunity to be able to look at things in a fresh way so that we can get back on track and we can respond to the call that God gives us. But there's a job description here. It's defined. It accompanies that call. When God put his mark on us in baptism and brings us into his family, he also calls us to share. To share the good news about Jesus Christ with those who don't know him. The scripture gives us some clear direction in this matter. After his suffering, death, and resurrection, Jesus then gathers his followers to a mountaintop where he's about ready to ascend into heaven. And he speaks to those who are there who will remain and who will continue to live and be the church. And he says, go and make disciples of all nations. Of course, you've heard these words before. We call this the Great Commission. It is Jesus who commissions the church. He commissions his followers to be about the business of sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone, with all people. The Great Commission is your commission. The Great Commission is my commission. And again in Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus says, read it with me, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. And then in the Old Testament book of Psalms that we read just a few moments ago, read it with me again, send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all mankind. Well, there are many believers in the world, many Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. They know the good news about Jesus. They know that he suffered and died on the cross to forgive their sins. They know that he rose again and promises that they too will live forever. They are sure of their faith in Jesus Christ and heaven to come. But that seems to be where it ends. They come to church often. They come and they read their Bible. They go to Bible studies. They attend concerts and enrichment seminars. But they don't take the next step. The next step of beginning to share their faith with others. No, that's not for me, they say. That's for someone else. I don't know how to speak to people. I wouldn't know really what to say. And sometimes our Christian faith can be very self-centered. It can be focused inward and not outward. In fact, we often get into the trap of praying to God to make our life more comfortable. Have you ever noticed that most of our prayers are, God, help me fix this, make this better, give me this, I want more of that. Often our prayers focus on our own needs and our own blessings and our own happiness instead of what's going on in the lives of others. Christians know that they were saved for a reason. They were saved to serve, that we were made for a mission. You see, God is calling us. He's inviting us to reach out beyond our comfort zone. God is building his kingdom. He's doing this through the preaching and the teaching and the sharing of his word. He's gathering people all over the world into his family. And this family lasts forever. It's not temporary. In heaven we're told that there'll be an enormous crowd gathered around the very throne of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and there will be people from every race and tribe and nation and language. And they will be bowing down and worshiping this Savior forever and ever. Jesus started with those disciples. 
Well, they traveled by walking and by riding on animals. And sometimes, even like St. Paul, they traveled on a ship. They did this to go from village to village, from town to town, to be able to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Today, we have airplanes, we have ships, we have trains, we have buses, we have automobiles, and we have the internet. What a gift. The internet that can be used to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a blessing that internet is that we can communicate with family and friends and with people across the ocean in different parts of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We really don't have any excuse not to share the good news. How can we step forward? How can we reach others for Jesus? First, we need to change our thinking from thinking about, about how God can meet our own needs and think about our spiritual needs, the spiritual needs of others. There are so many people that are hurting. There are so many people who need our prayers and our witness. There are so many people out there who need to know that there is a God who loves them and cares for them in Jesus Christ. And this is part of how we grow and we mature in the Christian faith to take that step and let others know about the love of Christ. And secondly, we need to make a change or a shift from local thinking to global thinking. Remember that we have a global God. Remember John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The first way that we can think globally is to begin by praying for specific nations or countries and peoples. You can get a map. You can put it on a wall, maybe in, a, in your den or special area where you meet with the family. You can pray for one country at a time. You can pray for missionaries and other volunteers who go out and share the gospel. You can find names of our missionaries on the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod website. We have been praying here in the church in our prayer time for individuals who are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in different parts of the world. This weekend, we're going to be taking a free will offering to support Alan and Shirley Peepenbrink, who are serving in Hong Kong, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Alan is the brother of Linda Sherman, who serves as a music ministry uh, leader in our congregation. And so we want to support their ministry. We'll take that offering today. In Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus gave us a pattern to help us in our involvement. Let's read it. You will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. Now his followers, and that's us, we're to reach out to the community around us, community of Schaumburg, Hoffman Estates, all of these areas around us and share the gospel. We're to reach out to that community and then to other countries and other cultures and even other peoples and nations around the world. We also need to shift our thinking from the here and now to eternal thinking. And so God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth in Jesus Christ. And the work that we do for him now will have eternal benefits, more people are going to be connected to Jesus because of our witness and more people will spend forever in heaven. So what are we allowing to stand in the way of our mission? What is preventing us from accepting the invitation to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us? Oh, there are many opportunities for us to support the mission of Christ with our money, with our financial gifts. But there is nothing, there is nothing like personally sharing what God has done for you in Jesus Christ with that friend, with that neighbor, with that person who sits at the desk next to you in the office, with that family member, that cousin, 
who is going through such a difficult time and needs to know about Jesus. There's nothing like personally taking the time to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who don't know him. So yes, God is calling us. He's calling you. He's calling me. Each one of us is called to be on mission for God. And he wants his whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. There are over 6 billion people on planet Earth. And God wants all people to come to believe and trust in him. So my friends, the Great Commission is your commission. And it's my commission. And we pray together the words of our text in Psalm 67 to read it and pray it with me as your prayer. Send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all mankind. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.